But apart from my little complaint, I still enjoy iRacing, and if I see myself building my iRacing and race against more clean and respectful racers, and possibly going places with it, not gonna lie, I could see myself spending quite a bit of money on this anyway. Well, 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 here we are now, ladies and gentlemen. It's been well over a year since I made a review on iRacing on my channel. In that video, I highlighted the various aspects of the sim from its handling, physics, and online racing to its subscription service. So, I felt it would be a good idea to revisit the video and make a one-year review based on how I feel about iRacing. And just a disclaimer, this is an unbiased and unsponsored review, and the developers have no influence on this review whatsoever. So with that being said, let's dive into it. So after over a year of racing and buying cars in iRacing, I can say with confidence that I enjoyed iRacing after my very first race with the Master Series, where I was constantly fighting for third place, I think it was, at the time. It was very close, but the guy I was racing with at the time uh, came on top. And that was when I realized, it's like, geez, I could go a long way with the uh, iRacing here. And so, that's what, exactly what has happened. And as stated previously in my last video, iRacing handling feels very natural to drive. When driving a front wheel drive, it behaves like it should in real life and a rear wheel drive car as it should. Tires and suspension are similar to its real life counterparts and have a huge impact on the car you are driving, including the moving suspension and the tire temperature all have huge impacts on the car as it would in real life. Force feedback, in my opinion, is the best out of all the sims I've tried as it feels very natural and linked to the road itself, meaning I can feel nearly every bump and curb on the road. And, even better, this is coming from someone who owns a Logitech G29 of all things. Can you believe that? When it comes to multiplayer racing, iRacing is king with that. Most of the racing I have been in has some of the closest I have taken part in, and the racing is very clean for the most part. Yes, there were one or two races where there was a lot of crashing and mishaps, but once you have your iRacing high enough, you can get some of the cleanest racing you would get on any sim. Online racing is very strict as bad behaviors such as deliberately crashing opponents off the track or shortcut the track to try and gain an advantage could land you a temporary or lifetime ban depending on the circumstances. So you're better off racing as clean as you can to get far with uh, iRacing. As mentioned previously, iRacing uses two systems to award clean driving called safety racing and iRacing. They increase or decrease depending on the race you have. If you have a clean race with little to no instance, both systems increase and they also decrease if it's the opposite. If you had a race where it was clean and there was no accidents or you didn't cut the track too many times, then it goes up. Like iRacing, if you have a race with loads of overtakes and you finish high up the field, it increases or decreases depending how high or low you finished in that race. You will also be matched with drivers who have a similar iRacing to you depending how your race went. So those are what I believe are the positives of iRacing. Now here are the negatives for the sim. Because iRacing is a subscription based service, you will have to pay a monthly or yearly membership fee depending on what you are paying for. I touched on this in the previous video I uploaded and while I get that iRacing is a premium esports platform, it can potentially turn away people who don't have the money or are trying to save up the money for a future. To add insult to injury, they even have paid DLC where you would be spending 12 US dollars, 11 euro for a car and 15 US dollars or 14 euro for a track. Now I know this will sound ironic coming from me because I spend a lot of money on cars and tracks, but I feel the DLC is too expensive for the price of the sub subscriptions they are charging for. Perhaps maybe if they reduce the price of the DLC by a fraction of the cost, it wouldn't be too bad. But hey, at the end of the day, it's your money. You can do what you want with it. The next negative I want to touch on is the netcode. I've seen a few races where people having netcode problems, where the sim would register a crash, a bump, or even a shove, despite the two cars being nowhere near each other on the track, which is very annoying. And I fail to understand why that issue hasn't been addressed yet. I've even seen times in races I took part in where cars barely even touch each other and already it registers a crash even though it was not a crash, they were nowhere near each other which iRacing really needs to uh, fix this unless it's a region based issue where one driver and is from Europe and another driver is from America and maybe it's like an internet connection or something. Contrary to another point I made, 
The force feedback, while it's good, does have one big flaw, and that is the frequency is set to 60 hertz maximum. Which means, for cars like Open Wheel and the prototypes, it would be difficult to handle. I've seen videos of people who were not able to save the car from spinning out, and that is because of the frequency range. To fix this, however, you can download a third-party software called IRFFB, which will increase the frequency to 360 hertz to match with the likes of R Factor 2 and AC. Overall, I enjoy iRacing and it became my go-to simulator now for multiplayer racing. If you're looking for a fantastic online multiplayer sim with great physics, iRacing is the king for that. So with that being said, unsubscribe, dislike and tell me how wrong I am in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a good one.